Friends, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is a very hard cataract. You can see the black appearance of this cataract. If we say it is grade 5 nuclear sclerosis, it is not enough. In brown cataracts, we say grade 5, but it is black. So it is much harder than NS grade 5. Let us observe management of this cataract. The main incision has been made just posterior to the limbus. A side port has been made. An air bubble has been injected into the anterior chamber. Here goes the tripan blue dye to stain the anterior surface of the cataract, the anterior capsule, adrenaline and phenocaine injected and the dye is washed out. The pupil has not dilated well. There is mild floppiness of the iris. These are additional challenges. Black cataract with floppy iris is a great challenge. And now, capsular excess is to be done. I take a utrita forceps pierce the anterior capsule at the center raise a capsular tag and this capsular tag is guided along the border of the pupil to get an adequate size trixis of about 5.75 millimeter almost 6 millimeter Unless we do this, there will be too much genular stress, there can be genular dialysis and what not. So a large rexis is the first step to manage such cases. Gentle hydrodissection to mobilize the nucleus and the nucleus is rotated. Visco again, this is 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. And now the tip of the phaco needle is introduced into the anterior chamber. See the exposed part of the phaco needle. It is more, the exposed part is more than routine cases. The thickness of such nuclei is huge, more than 5 millimeter. Uh, here it goes deep into the substance of the nucleus goes through the substance towards the opposite equator and as it reaches near the opposite equator the chopper is used to get a nice crack the chopper is reintroduced into the depth of the crack and a nice good crack is obtained not much of lateral separation is done rotated 180 degree few skulls go to deeper level and the two heminuclei are free each heminucleus is being subdivided into several parts. This is one fragment of the heminucleus and the bigger piece is subdivided into two and we get three pieces. The other heminucleus is divided into two pieces. And now we have got five pieces and one by one each nuclear piece is emulsified. From the very beginning ultrasonic energy is 90 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Each nuclear fragment is tilted, emulsification is started from the apex. Each nuclear piece is eaten gradually, if necessary, it is subdivided into smaller pieces. Emulsification is carried out at the iris plane in the central part of the anterior chamber. 
you are remaining always in the central 3 millimeter zone and thus we come to the last piece. At this time I ask for lower parameters. At this time the vacuum is reduced to 300, flow rate 30, ultrasonic energy is about 80 percent and very carefully, very slowly the last piece is emulsified. I am trying to separate the epinucleus from the nucleus so that the epinucleus forms a shield. But the epinucleus just came out and the posterior capsule is just next to the hard nuclear bits. So, I have to be very careful at this time, be more slow and it is done. Whenever the iris is in the side port, remove the handpiece first and let the iris fall back and then remove the chopper. There is a small nuclear piece. Let me see if it comes out through the main wound. I enlarge the main wound a bit because anyway I am going to use a big cartridge. So, enlarge the wound about 3 millimeter and try to remove the nuclear piece, but it gets stuck at the wound. It will not come out. I do not want to enlarge the wound anymore. I inject some visco through the side port and then depress the posterior leaf. Still it does not come out. So, put some visco and go into the entry chamber with the handpiece. try to emulsify this, but it gets detached, it comes to the main wound. Inject visco again, little more visco and place it at the center of the anterior chamber. At this time I engage it at the tip and emulsify this. So, it is done. And now, cortical cleanup is done with this 23 gauze Simco cannula, this lot of cortex in this case and it came out very nicely. This patient is allergic to tropicamide. So, we have dilated the people and immediately after 4 5 hours we are going to start steroids. Whenever there is iris, tendency of the iris to prolapse through the wounds, hydro implantation is not a good option. Should use visco and place the lens in the capsular bag. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal non aspheric intraocular lens. The lens goes into the capsular bag and now our job is to remove the visco very nicely. First, I use the Simco cannula, decrease the load of visco from the anterior chamber and from the capsular bag. In such cases, we must not leave visco behind the eye veil because retained visco is the main cause of postoperative raised intraocular pressure. 
and it gives a lot of discomfort to the patients. Next, I use bimanual irrigation aspiration and remove the visco from the anterior chamber. This is moxifloxacin. Look at the main wound, there is no sign of wound burn. This is probably the beauty of Oatly tip design. The tip is wider at the mouth and its shaft is narrower. There is a lot of water flow around the metal needle and it keeps the wound always cool. The antechamber is nicely formed and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.